Hello everyone, my name is Michelle and today I'm going to be talking about sort of a weird sensitive topic. I don't use TikTok. The only time I used TikTok was when I was experimenting with a certain fungus and <laughs> I just got glued to Charlie D'Amelio. Like I couldn't get over how talented she was. But then the next day when I looked on it, it was like, oh, she was just dancing. <laughs> Anyways. Today I'm going to be talking about hashtag trauma talk. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on the bell, and please comment below if you want to because it will help to push the algorithm. Comment any color except your favorite. Or, you know, a discussion that would be more towards the video. So let's get into the video. I went on the dissociated subreddit. I found some interesting content. A post called Kaya and Co. Abuse stories they've shared. Horrifying, trigger warning, rape, and physical abuse. Trauma dumping isn't a clinical term, but it's just a term that we use. Is just overloading someone unprompted. Information about yourself, someone else, or something going on in the world. Something that we have to realize before getting started is that we all have a nervous system. When someone is discussing their trauma, their nervous system System is really hyped up. A lot of the times it could be shot and so they kind of just spew this information and what what's hard for us to understand is that the other person on the other side also has a nervous system and they are receiving this information. Your therapist won't get stressed out about it, they are trained to do things like this. I've heard some horror stories on TikTok about people who you know, shared their uh, uh, grandfather's coffin and like they put filters on people who are dead and you know, a bunch of horrible stuff and so people are like, well it's normal now, like it's just a thing on TikTok that everyone does. Which is horrifying to me. I feel like TikTok might be like the Snapchat of my generation was the Snapchat like in 2012 and I used to go on there and vent or trauma dump. I would get these negative comments from friends at school because they would be like, why are you saying it on there? It's not appropriate to say it on there. Like, obviously we care about you, what, what not. There are two opinions and sort of the first opinion is that it's a great way for people to express themselves, not keep their trauma bottled up, and it helps others when they have experienced similar trauma to feel more comfortable or to be educated about it. And then there's number two, which is sort of my opinion. I want to get to that opinion, but I feel like there's so many people on TikTok, children, who feel like they need to one-up each other, sort of like when I was in high school. I, like, you know how, ah, oh, fuck. I gotta stop wearing headbands. Oh my God, I think I like got a scab or something. Influencers know that the more extensive their trauma is, the more it'll be boosted on the algorithm. It is already a phenomenon on TikTok that I'm sure is going to be taken into law in the future where people are just faking every disorder under the sun. Obviously DID and Tourette's are up the, the first ones up there. But like when I was at school, when someone would say, oh, I got four hours of sleep and then someone else would butt in and say, well, I got two hours of sleep. It's like, okay, like what about the guy with four hours? Of sleep. I don't know, that's kind of how it feels to me. It sort of feels like when I was in middle school I did this, but then I went to therapy and I learned coping skills, I learned more healthy outlets and such. So I mean, with kids, it's like, you know, I made embarrassing YouTube videos when I was younger. You're gonna do what you're gonna do, but it's when like the adults do it, you know, 18 plus, because children, I guess, look at you in a way that you might not think they do, where they think you're, that you have more experience, you know what's up, where you might really just be having a little, making a little mistake in your list of mistakes that you've ever made. So something that kind of bothers me about it is, I see the other side completely, we'll go over that. The first side is that it's not cool to dance to the worst trauma that you've experienced. Um, I guess if I danced to that, it wouldn't hit me the right way. If I saw someone dancing to the same trauma that I have online, whether it be worse or less severe, I would then go back to the way that someone would feel if they said, oh, I got four hours of sleep and someone was all, like, I got two hours of sleep. It's like, well then, it could just be because like, I come from that point of view. I grew up with a sister and whereas I know with a lot of people, it's just like my issues aside, all of who I am aside, and let's talk about you. 
too. It's hard to do this, especially when you're just scrolling through TikTok. Hashtag trauma talk. It was insane to me because like, what? On the post that I saw, I didn't watch the videos from Dissociated because she's just too upsetting to me, but I saw the screenshots on the Reddit and they said, I'm sure that they provide some sort of trigger warning with the videos that Kaya and Co made. It's, it's so odd. It's like, where did Kyle go? Kyle was supposed to be like the um, caretaker or something and he just, he's not really doing that. <laughs> I was also making the comment, so Chloe integrated with her sexual protector, Nina, um, and now she's still asexual? I don't know though. It also kind of prompts people who don't have this, any sort of disorder to kind of like fetishize it and like say that they have it too, like um, little children. For example, I'm gonna make a whole video about ADHD talk. I don't know if that's a hashtag. It's not cool. Like mental disorders aren't cool. And I know that like we're coping by dancing to our trauma, but when you're neurodivergent, you are living in a world that was not made for you. It's not cute. The other question that I had at first was, what is the goal of this? Is it to just trauma dump? Is it for attention seeking? Whether it's gonna be triggering or not for anyone, it's quite gonna be upsetting. And a lot of people are like, well, maybe we should feel upset because these people need to be heard. I understand that side of the argument, but it's also hard because it's an epidemic of people faking on TikTok. What will you gain out of it? Like, it might activate other people's nervous systems and make them upset, whether you wanted to do that or not, because you wanted to express your trauma. And a lot of people say, well, you know, there's a trigger warning, so. In a lot of these TikTok videos, people are doing their makeup, using ring lights. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, prompting other people to be like, hmm, well, what's my trauma? Oh, it's not good enough. What can I make my trauma? It's really hard because when you post something like that, you know you're gonna get a lot of controversy on it. I'm not sure what kind of magic I could use to express my trauma to feel better, but the thought of posting it on TikTok makes me just feel like that's giving others the opportunity to think about it and say, mm, like, I don't think this is true, or mm, this isn't even that bad, or etc. And I'm not giving them that. I'm gonna talk about that with my therapist. With dissociated, people are like, well, some people say that if survivors feel comfortable sharing their story, then all of us shouldn't be allowed to basically judge them. If it's upsetting to us, we should basically just block the profile or leave their page because you are also valid. So you are aiming to push your trauma and story into the algorithm. The worse it is, the better the algorithm will push it and if that's what you're aiming for, then you will be able to break your silence and be heard. I'm still working on being having extremely low self-esteem. I wouldn't want to push my trauma in the algorithm. like. Why? Let's let someone else's trauma be on there. Like, why? Why? Some people think that hashtag trauma talk is desperate or a way of fantasizing or fetishizing disorders, which, like, I don't know, you guys. Like, I I'd have to think about it. Like, hashtag ADHD talk does. It just sounds upsetting to me. Like, I know that for some people, it's like, well, this person has experienced the exact same thing I have, and it's so validating. So I don't want to take that away from you and let me know your experiences on that. In my personal opinion, it's inappropriate. Um, but I know that's controversial, so. I had a lot of what I thought were rock bottoms, only to discover another rockier bottom.
make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on the bell, and please comment below if you want to because it will help to push the algorithm. Please comment any color except your favorite. Or, you know, a discussion that would be more towards the video. Um, or don't comment at all. I hope you have a great day and goodbye.